stop and think. What planet, what environment Morris children are inheriting from? As a hobby environmentalist, I've tried to be on top of green literature and all things green. And I've time and again been fascinated how given all that we know about humanity's unsustainable practices that lead to catastrophic outcomes on planetary scale, we dwell in this continuity as if nothing is happening. Occasionally we pick up our reusable bags when we do our groceries and refuse to use plastic and feel good about it. But really, how often do we stop and think what planet, what environment we're giving to our children, what impact we as individuals and community are having on the environment around us? I did quite often, especially after having my own child. So what did I do? What were my two cents? I moved to Armenia together with an incredible team of committed individuals, we opened up a green, eco-friendly, sustainable, and non-smoking coffee shop in Yerevan, where nothing is sustainable, let alone eco-friendly, and everyone smokes. Everyone thought we were crazy, but here is why we did it. Business, virtually any business, has been seen as the primary culprit behind environmental degradation. Born out of the explosion of industrialism and subsequently of capitalism, business has been eating away the finite resources of our planet and at the same time abusing it. However, today, with the availability of knowledge about green practices, it has really come down to a choice. Do you, as a business owner, choose to minimize the potentially negative impact on your immediate community and environment? We said yes. In fact, we decided that environment and sustainability will lead our business practices. It will be the core of our daily business operation. Above and beyond, we were guided by the no notion that our customers, in return, will make that choice. Today, they're, they're growing. there's a growing number of conscious customers who know who choose sustainable businesses because they know that at our coffee shop they won't just find a great cup of coffee but they will find care. They know that in return for their business we care for the water that they drink, the food that they eat, and the environment that they live in. For us, green business meant first and foremost clean business. Right, here in Armenia, forget about it. We heard that mantra every day from our, business, from our fellow business owners, from bureaucrats, from friends. I remember my first not so clean encounter. So, uh, to import goods to Armenia, you have to do it through a customs agency, or customs again, a uh, customs agency, and cus or customs agent. Uh, so, here I was meeting with a, with a customs agent. Here he is, dri driving into the meeting in his expensive vehicle with all second-digit number plates, and me thinking, all right, this might be an expensive agency, but I'll give it a try. So uh, there he is, explaining to me how to avoid paying the 32% stipulated tax, and how in doing so, I have to very generously tip all the relevant customs officials. And me standing in utter disbelief that this individual is offering me to commit tax evasion, bribery, and virtually become a criminal. The best part when I politely refused, he genuinely got upset and wheeled off in his vehicle without saying goodbye. Let me put an asterisk there. Today we are working with an incredible customs agency that are clean and professional. So these and similar encounters just pushed the wrong buttons with us. We decided to be speckless. There were days when it was incredibly difficult and our entire founding team was taking mild sedatives after frequent encounters with customs officials. But staying to our principles not only kept us afloat, but also sailed us in high winds. <laughs> How many of you have encountered an, an acquaintance or a friend who was um, somewhere in LA or Boston or London who said, goodness, I miss these incredible Armenian tomatoes. <laughs> yes, I myself have as well. Uh, but how often do we ask what makes our produce so incredibly tasty? 
the abundance of multiple ecosystems, sunlight, space, water, and most importantly, uh, still the remaining culture of small-scale uh, scale agriculture. Armenia has an incredible potential to become um, a, a guinea pig, a countrywide sustainable, uh, sustainable state, a guinea pig in its own right. However, for that, we need a political vision and the right strategy in place. Um, another reason that prompted us to come to Armenia is that from a marketing perspective, some people can say, well, it's a very small country. Today we have about 3 million uh, population. Well, officially, non officially, probably much less. However, with our business strategy and our vision in mind, we know that a sustainable culture can be incredibly infectious in a positive way. And we already see how uh, green practices and sustainability has, has been, become trendy in Armenia. The other reason. Oh, the other reason that has prompted us to be here is the incredible, innovative, fascinating resource of this country, its people at home and abroad. Our project became successfully successful above and beyond because of our incredible designers, our cooks, our carpenters, who for the life of theirs could not understand why we wanted to find our Soviet chairs and why we wanted to upcycle them, but who nevertheless did it with a full heart. Okay, so I spoke a little bit about challenges, but I want to reflect on one specific challenge which, which often see, seems um, insurmountable in our medium, and that's authorities. Um, I once worked with, with UNDP here on a sustainable development project, and I was I was day in day out frustrated with the culture of simulation of our authorities. How everything was done just to simulate that it was being done, and then I realized that it is us, the citizens of this country, who have to become the change that they want to see. And I want to tell you a small story about a, a green victory that we had recently. So there, there's a uh, space in front of our coffee shop, which is concrete field and uh, is not put to any use. So we decided to apply to the municip to municipality to get a permission uh, to install bicycle parking there. Uh, letter one goes, we get a rejection. Letter two goes, we get a second rejection. Letter three, and before I, we get a third rejection, we call them. We invite them to come and speak for themselves that um, it actually can be a very nice project, a small little bicycle parking. Multiple phone conversations, visits from a municipality, seven month long saga ends with us having a bicycle parking in the end. So, uh, so I want to, to finish the challenge with a quote from Ray Davis. He once said, a challenge becomes an obstacle only when you bow down to it. So uh, I want to reflect on the rewards. Running a sustainable business can be incredibly rewarding from an ethical perspective as well as financial. I want to reflect on the intangibles, the ethical perspective. We had so many customers who gave their testimony saying that you've created this oasis in Yerevan where people connect and reconnect, often exchanging ideas, often colored in many shades of green. This is incredibly rewarding. As for the tangibles, we were we were very risky to set up a policy of non of a non smoking policy at our coffee shop. However, we were very determined that we will stick to the principle, and we were ourselves surprised that from the first month of operations we registered profit, and month in and month out we've been registering profit. But more importantly, and more excitingly, is that today our coffee shop is registered in three different countries around the world. And we are scheduled to open in Georgia in a few months, as well as expand potentially in Armenia. Here's what I want you to take home today from this talk. In its ancient historiography, Armenia was referred to as the Garden of Eden, and its king as the gardener, I get fun. Being green and sustainably cultivating our land is in the construct of our national identity. However, today, we have collectively failed that incredible imaginary. And not because authorities fail us, but because we let them. Take this vision of green and sustainable Armenia where your children bear clean and organic fruit and breathe immaculate air and do something with it.
open up a green coffee shop, start making wine, or open up a business installing solar panels. But be bold and risky, for the bigger the challenge, the greater is the reward in overcoming it. Thank you.